A $1.6 billion mega project is reshaping the East River Tunnel, one of Manhattan's most critical transportation arteries, from a deteriorated storm damaged corridor into a symbol of infrastructure renewal and modernized engineering. With hundreds of workers operating around the clock, Amtrak is carrying out the most extensive tunnel rehabilitation in its history. So what meaningful progress has been achieved so far? What major benefits and system-wide impacts can riders expect once the overhaul is complete? In today's On the Trains video, we take a comprehensive and up-to-date look at the East River Tunnel upgrade and the pivotal role it plays in shaping the future of rail travel in the Northeast. To understand the scale of this mega project, we need to look directly inside the first tunnel now under reconstruction. Latest upgrades. Beneath Manhattan, inside the first tube now fully taken out of service Tunnel 2, a sweeping transformation is unfolding, one that is visible even at a glance. The most striking change is the complete reconstruction of the bench walls. The century-old concrete long cracked, spalled and crushed under decades of pressure, and the corrosive aftermath of Hurricane Sandy has been entirely demolished. In its place, crews are pouring new, thicker, high-strength concrete walls, engineered with expanded internal channels to house a fully modernized utility network. As Warren LeBeau, Amtrak's vice president of infrastructure, puts it plainly, we completely removed the bench walls and all the electrical conduits inside and found them severely damaged. That discovery set the stage for an all-new wiring and signal system. Thousands of meters of corroded salt-soaked cables have been cut out and discarded, replaced with neatly organized bundles of fiber optic and electrical lines built to 21st century standards critical for stable operations and long-term reliability that should extend well into the next century. The track structure itself is also being fundamentally re-engineered. The traditional ballast stones and the loose rock bed that contributed to vibration erosion and uneven wear have been removed entirely. In their place, the tunnel floor is now being rebuilt as a continuous concrete track slab providing a rigid, stable foundation designed to reduce vibration and improve ride quality for higher speed movements. Safety improvements are equally dramatic. The trackside walls are being lowered to address a major evacuation issue. Previously, passengers would have had to climb up high ledges during an emergency. With the redesigned profile, adults and children alike can step directly from the train to the emergency walkway without scrambling over hazardous obstacles. At the same time, the entire tunnel is being brought up to the most advanced fire protection standards, with new smoke sensors, emergency ventilation systems, fire-resistant materials, and redundant lighting features that simply cannot be added through piecemeal repairs. Its defenses against saltwater infiltration are also being rebuilt from the ground up. The original concrete lining is thoroughly cleaned, a specialized waterproofing membrane is applied, and a redesigned drainage system is incorporated to rapidly channel away any seepage. These far-reaching changes raise a crucial question, where does the project currently stand? Let's move on to the next section, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for daily train updates. Progress and Timeline as of mid-December 2025, the East River Tunnel Rehabilitation has completed roughly 6 to Dika 7 months of the 13-month work window for the first tube a stretch long enough to prove that the project is advancing almost exactly according to its original schedule. The effort formally began in May-June 2025 when Amtrak fully closed Tunnel 2 and initiated Phase 1. Within the first half year, demolition work reached 100% completion and overall progress inside the tunnel climbed to nearly 50%. By mid-December 2025, the project is firmly in the reconstruction phase. Hundreds of workers rotate through round-the-clock shifts with the constant rhythm of concrete pumps, steel cutting, and immediate quality inspections echoing through the tube. The work pace is being pushed to the highest sustainable level while maintaining uncompromising safety, something Amtrak leadership has repeatedly stressed in its latest updates. Ahead lies a clearly defined timeline that has remained unchanged since day one. In July 2026, Tunnel 2 is scheduled to finish all construction, undergo comprehensive testing, and reopen to commercial service. This will be followed by a three-month pause from August through October 2026, dedicated to synchronizing the newly installed signaling systems with the three remaining tunnels. This step is essential to ensure that once all four tubes are in service, train operations flow seamlessly without even a momentary disruption. Beginning in October 2026, the next tunnel will be taken offline for its own 13-month reconstruction effort, mirroring the now-proven process underway in Tunnel 2. 
By late 2027, all four East River tunnels are expected to be fully restored and operating to modern standards marking the completion of the $1.6 billion program. In recent statements, Warren LeBeau, Laura Mason of Amtrak, and Rob Free of the Long Island Railroad have all reaffirmed that the project remains on schedule with no significant delays more than a technical projection. It is a renewed commitment to the millions of passengers who have waited since Hurricane Sandy in 2012 for the day when all four tunnels can once again operate safely and reliably. With the timeline holding firm, it's time to examine what these efforts will mean once the tunnels reopen. The Challenges Despite the strong momentum and visible progress, the East River Tunnel overhaul has faced a formidable set of challenges rooted in the sheer complexity of underground engineering on an active high-density rail corridor. The most difficult obstacles were technical and logistical. Before the tunnel could be fully taken out of service, crews had to perform an exhausting weekly ritual. Every Monday, they reassembled temporary cables, utility lines, and makeshift tracks along the tunnel walls to keep trains moving through the remaining tubes. By Friday, they spent hours dismantling all of it, only to secure a narrow weekend window of real construction time. Amtrak's Laura Mason identified this cycle as the core reason why this work couldn't be done at night, and on weekends as usual, insisting a full shutdown was the only way to achieve meaningful progress. Working 30 meters underground in a tightly confined space with 350 workers rotating around the clock also placed enormous pressure on safety protocols and fatigue management. Operational challenges quickly surfaced as well. ALIRR service disruption in September 2025, triggered by an initially unidentified issue inside the tunnel, validated early MTA concerns about relying on only three tunnels. In such a constrained setup, even a minor incident can escalate into a system-wide crisis affecting tens of thousands of riders. Interagency coordination became another major hurdle. Early debates focused on whether to reduce the number of operating tracks during construction while maintaining reliable service required constant precise communication among Amtrak, LIRR, and NJ Transit. All three agencies had to synchronize scheduling emergency procedures and train movements through the remaining tunnels with no margin for error. Ultimately, they stabilized the situation through concrete actions, 24 per 7, staffing frequent equipment inspections, and revamped response protocols. Across all updates, team cohesion was repeatedly highlighted as the key to keeping the system running. LIRR's Rob Free emphasized, if Amtrak wins, we all win, while Mason underscored that we are working together, communicating, discussing to ensure we understand each other about how to navigate trains. The result was a rare achievement for a project of this scale. Disruption stayed minimal, on-time performance remained high, and the MTA publicly commended Amtrak for its steady coordinated management during one of the most demanding infrastructure operations in the Northeast. Ultimately, the challenges encountered beneath the East River were not just technical obstacles, but also tests of coordination resilience and institutional discipline. Each obstacle, from service disruptions to suffocating working conditions, forced the team to refine its approach and strengthen the project's operational backbone. Benefits and Impacts For passengers, each tube will be capable of supporting roughly 150-450 trains per day, with far greater reliability effectively eliminating the risk of system-wide paralysis should another sandy-scale superstorm strike. Even now operating with only three tunnels, LIRR has sustained an impressive 96.3% on-time performance. Safety improvements represent another major leap forward. The tunnels are being rebuilt to fully meet modern fire safety standards supported by a new system that will streamline train inspection, monitoring, and directional control, advanced waterproofing measures, and a redesigned drainage system, ensuring the tunnels can better withstand flooding and climate-driven environmental stress for decades to come. The socioeconomic impact is equally significant. This project safeguards the mobility of over 10 million people across New York, New Jersey, and Long Island, preserving one of the Northeast Corridor's most indispensable links. As the busiest rail artery in the United States, a more reliable NEC translates directly into increased economic productivity, shorter delays, strengthened regional connectivity, and long-term stability for millions of daily commuters. The project itself sustains around-the-clock employment for 350 direct workers and supports thousands more in construction logistics, engineering, and material supply injecting millions into the local economy. Environmental benefits also ripple outward. A more dependable rail network encourages greater use of public transit over private vehicles, helping reduce emissions, ease congestion, and support sustainability goals in one of the world's most densely populated urban regions.
As Amtrak's Warren LeBeau puts it, we will be able to evacuate passengers at the appropriate height, inspect and adjust train directions for safe operation, and the new systems will be able to ensure operation in this tunnel for the next 100 years. That is the true value of this $1.6 billion investment, not merely repairing what was damaged but building the future of mobility for the entire Northeast. But to reach these long-term gains, the project had to overcome a series of tough obstacles. So when all four tunnels reopen, what are you most looking forward to? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. See you.